Okay, so I'm driving Abby, short for the Abyss, the new name of our vehicle. And I'm gonna interview Julie while I'm driving. And uh, she's gonna tell you where we're going and how we're gonna get there. Our plan is Ukraine. <laughs> so we're hoping to go through Hungary. We'll see what happens. We've got all the documentation we think we need, but this is a nightmare trying to, to figure things out through COVID. If not, we're going to reroute through Romania. And if there's a problem with that, I think we'll be heading to Montenegro to figure out what the heck to do next. Okay, so first stop, Hungarian border. <laughs> and we'll try to see if we get across. Yes. It's kind of iffy on what we're seeing online. Yes, it is. For those of you following our channel, we did pick a name for our vehicle. It is Abby, short for the Abyss, due to all the storage room. Thanks everybody for your help. So Julie, people are going to be wondering, why aren't we just going to go visit Budapest or Hungary? Why are we just going to drive through? Oh, I wish. Um, Hungary has been closed and is closed to pretty much any traveler. We're going to try for the transit and that's about it. Um, and we're we're taking a chance. It's an hour there uh, to the border, so we figure why not try? And if we can, it cuts off four hours for us, so we're we're hopeful. So for those of you that have not been researching this and don't speak Julie, transit means we're trying to just pass through the country. We have like 12 hours to get in the country and leave the country, and they have a travel corridor, so it has. Uh, that's the definition of what Julie is saying by transit and we'll be trying to do the same thing with Romania we We're pretty sure we're, we could do Romania, but it's a, like Julie said it's like three or four hours longer So we're hoping we could do Hungary. We're about 60% sure we can do Hungary So this is what the road looks like on the way towards the Hungarian border. You'll see that there's a lot of good roads in Serbia they do a lot of uh, maintenance and upgrades so right now we're in a construction area. Traffic's moving pretty good. Um, you see they're doing some new paving over to the side. So in a lot of the areas of Serbia, you'll have some really decent roads. However, it seems like if you're going east to west and heading out towards uh, Montenegro, those roads get a little bit more sketchy. Okay, we're at the border with Hungary. This will be the moment of truth, trying to see if we can get through over here. Got a long line, not going anywhere fast. Okay, so. We uh, made it! <laughs> we we are in Hungary. So this saves us about three or four hours. No, it saves four and a half, guys. Four and a half hours. <laughs> now, we're in Hungary. We're on route to Ukraine. Doesn't mean they let us into Ukraine, which will make a world of problems because we have, what, 12 hours to get in and out of here? Um, you know, at the border, they actually, they asked where we're headed. We said Ukraine. They didn't tell us 12 hours. They didn't say anything. I, I'm just not sure. The information is very unclear, but I can tell you we made it across the border. They were very wonderful uh, to deal with. And, oh, don't forget your vignetta. You have to get a vignetta. And what did the vignetta cost? Uh, it was 1680 euro uh, right across the border. So just FYI, if you do it online, you're gonna save yourself about four euro. And, I just thought I would do better here. And just for those Americans out there that don't speak Julie, a vignetta is what they use in lieu of toll roads. Correct. So you pay one time and then they take your license plate and they've got cars out there that look for license plates. And if you don't have a valid vignetta, you get a ticket. So and you have expensive. to buy a vignetta when you enter their country. It's expensive. So and uh, so it's-, the, it's the toll is expensive, or not the toll, the, the Fine is expensive. The fine is expensive, and you have to buy a 10 day minimum here, uh, guys. There's nothing less than 10 days. Yep. Okay, so um, we're on the road again. As Julie and I travel as nomads through the world, we went ahead and signed up in January of 2021 with IM Global for their medical coverage to protect us from a medical catastrophe that might befall us. I went ahead and became an affiliate. There is a link in my video description if you would like to sign up for medical coverage as you travel abroad from your home country. Please use this link. I will make a commission. It does not change your rate. 
Welcome to Ukraine. The Ukraine border checkpoint was actually pretty strict. We opened up our vehicle, they checked our paperwork, we were scrutinized. We got through, it's not the border checkpoint we wanna to have to go through on a regular basis. When COVID's not going on, maybe it's a little bit easier. Um, they are technically at war with Russia, so that could be part of it. Right, we just parked here in the small town, Ukraine. And no sooner did we get inside, it started pouring rain. So guys, I think this town is called Ushrad. It's got a nice little pedestrian zone. It actually surpassed our expectations. This was just gonna be kind of a two night stay for us to get some rest inside of the border of Ukraine. And we saw that this was a decent sized town but it actually has some life and some charm to it. It's got a very nice little pedestrian zone with shops and the people were very, very friendly. The bridge apparently is part of a tourist attraction and it goes through the pedestrian zone connecting the two sides of the town across the river. But there were a lot of different little charming things about this town and we're gonna explore some of it with you. It's worth a pit stop and a couple nights. So I think we're in a town called Ushrad, but who knows? I can spell it, that's it. <laughs> so we're thinking of Ushrad, but we did go to a restaurant that has English writing called Good Food Cafe. And we're gonna be getting <laughs> two beautiful lunches. And combined, it looks like with our two juices that we just received and our food when it comes, will come out to a grand total of about $12.40. And this is our beautiful waitress here. And so 12.40, we'll show you the salads in one moment. But one thing I wanna say on. is, guys, a lot of you ask us, how hard is it with uh, language barriers? This one was tough. This one's really tough because on the table is where you get the menu. So we had to take this, open this, and then use another um, cell phone and use the translator. And our waitress does not speak one word of English and we speak not one word of Ukrainian. So together we're doing really well. Yeah. Now luckily the menu actually had a lot of pictures, but I was able to use my phone to translate Julie's phone that had the menu. Okay, so this is the lunch that we're having. Now we did have an addition, so we're a little bit above the 12.40 for the both of us. We added on a piece of dessert that we split, it's a brownie, and that's gonna be uh, about $2.40 more. So I guess we're at uh, 14.60 for the both of us at this uh, cafe here. We'll tell you in the, in the pictures later. <laughs> yeah. And this is in the pedestrian zone here. If you'd like to be part of our journey and travel with us, don't forget to subscribe and please don't forget to give this video a like if you like the content. We appreciate you. So if we lived here, we would definitely regularly visit this restaurant. As you can see, my brownie is gone. My salad was complete. And Julie and I were just speaking about, there's a place in Satellite Beach in Florida. I'm actually in um, Indian Harbor Beach in the Atlantic called the jungle that we used to go to and as a family taking our kids we were lucky if we walked out with under a hundred dollars for similar meals for each of us in there so this was a pretty good meal. Hey. so this was a pretty good price <laughs> say ciao ciao we found this town very charming we were surprised although we shouldn't be because much of Europe was ravaged by the Nazis. This town was 31% Jewish prior to World War II. Most of them were sent to death camps. Only a few hundred survived. Their synagogue remains here. 10,000 Jews once lived in this town. So as you know, we travel with two dogs. Finding a green space is important. So Bazdash Park is a large park right here in Ujarad. It's approximately 50 hectares, which translates out to roughly 125 acres. And it's more than just a park. There are hiking trails. There's a lot to explore, but there's also kind of an amusement park here. Uh, it's a small one, but it's got Ferris wheels. It's got bumper cars. It's 
got some fun things to come out and do with family, places to jump around with the kids. And for those that are a little bit more adventuresome, they've got the tree trekking so that you can jump up in the trees and do some exploring. So if tree trekking is your thing, apparently you can do that right here in this park. Probably be okay on these lower ones for me. There are some people more adventurous than I, and you'll see there's this guy. Now in this park, it's very tranquil, and you know it's probably as good a place for any to have a little church and a place to be at peace with your God. And here in this park, there is an Eastern Orthodox church that just has some very, very interesting architectural features to it. And you know, if you're a spiritual person and you wanted to do some praying, this seems like a wonderful place to do that. Okay, so we've got Abby loaded up. She's a little bit dirty from the long haul. It's Julie studying, getting the map ready to go. Dogs are back there in the back. You can see Katie looking out. And if you look really, really carefully in there, you'll see Arya behind that window. But we're, uh, we're getting ready to go. So the Airbnb is in an older building. When we first pulled up, I had visions of our Macedonia experience, but inside it actually turned out to be quite a nice little place. The yard actually worked out well for the dogs. And the proximity to the town was not too bad, about a six, eight minute drive. But this is a typical working class building here in this town here in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine. But you'll see it's just a nice residential neighborhood, but there's a lot of older buildings, probably built in the communist era. We did have this nice little balcony that looked out over the yard and the metallic door there was our entry. So we enter the inside, come to this door here, and you'll see the inside is actually very, very nice. Got a nice living room area, TV. Julie and I actually enjoyed sitting out on this balcony here. There's a couple chairs out here. Julie's over there in the car, we're getting ready to go. And inside here in the kitchen, we had a full kitchen, two burners, microwave, oven, full-size refrigerator with a freezer. And in the bathroom, you have a washer and a shower. Two bedrooms, one good sized bedroom in here. This one we only used to steal the blankets from. Not that they were really needed, it's quite hot. And excuse the bed, we're on our way out so we didn't really make it properly, but it's a good sized bedroom in here. And so this was our two night rest Coming into the Ukraine, or into Ukraine, I should not say the Ukraine, it's Ukraine. And it uh, met our needs. Ready for this last haul to, to the bib? Sure am. We're all loaded up and everybody's on the road again. Aria's back there if you can't see her. We hope that you appreciated and enjoyed the video of our journey to Ujarad from Novi Sad and that you'll join us for our future journeys and adventures. And as we mentioned, the next stop is Lviv, Ukraine. So we'll be there for about five weeks. We'll hope to see what it's like to live there, examine the cost of living, and see if it's a viable place for consideration as a long-term place to stay. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.